If you can't tell, I bought a Winnie the Pooh shirt, and I adore it. It's technically pajamas, I have matching shorts and socks, but I will wear their shirt forever. Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin, I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today, I'm going to talk about The Ghost of Cypress Swamp. The Ghost of Cypress Swamp is a 1977 Wonderful World of Disney television release. It's directed by Vincent McEvity, cinematography by Leonard J. South, editing by Gordon D. Brenner, the music's by Jimmy Haskell. It's written by Harry Spaulding, based off a book called Weak Foot by Linda Klein. Vincent McEvity is most known for directing Emmy-winning TV shows such as Gunsmoke, The Untouchables, Star Trek, and Murder, She Wrote. He also has a lot of Disney credits. Leonard J. South is most known for Alfred Hitchcock's Marine, Hang High, Buck Rogers, and The Music Man. Gordon D. Brenner is most known for Condor Man, Herbie Goes Bananas, and Pete's Dragon. Jimmy Haskell won an Emmy for music composition for See How She Runs. He also won Grammys for the songs Ode to Billy Joe, Bridge Over Troubled Water, and If You Leave Me Now. Harry Spaulding's most known for Chosen Survivors, The Day Mars Invaded Earth, and Curse of the Fly. The film stars Jeff East, Vic Morrow, Tom Simcox, and Cindy Aylbacher. I talk all about Jeff East in the video I made about the Flight of the Grey Wolf, so if you want to learn all about him, please go check out that video. The link will be in the description. Vic Morrow's most known for Combat, Blackboard Jungle, King Creole, God's Little Acre, and The Bad News Bears. He was tragically killed with two child actors in a stunt helicopter accident during the movie shoot of The Twilight Zone. Tom Simcox was in a lot. The 11th Hour, Combat Columbo, Hawaii Five-0, Charlie's Angels, Knight Rider, and Airwolf, just to name a few. Cindy Aylbacher is most known for Planet of the Apes, The Young and the Restless, Slumber Party Massacre 2, and My Mother the Car. Not even five minutes into this movie, literally four minutes and 30 seconds, a dog dies. I I was so mad. The version of the film I watched was incredibly poor quality, so I feel like I can't give an accurate opinion on the cinematography, but what I can tell you is the movement was out of control. There were dramatic zooms everywhere. It was like, <gasps> it was so insane. I'm telling you, there were so many dramatic zooms in this movie. And like, some of them were very warranted. You know, a dog dying, dramatic zoom, for sure. Like, coming in contact with a mountain lion, sure, I'll let you get away with the dramatic zoom. But there were other instances where it's like, we get it with the dramatic zoom, okay? Relax. This movie was a roller coaster and not so much of emotion, although it was like up and down with emotion wise, but it was like appropriate. It was up and down quality wise and not like visual quality. I mean like the encompassing entertainment of the film. Parts of it, I was so invested. I was so like, oh, okay, here we are, I'm here. And other parts of it were so boring and I was like, can it be over yet? Which is so bizarre to me because I don't think I've had a movie that I've been like, parts of it, I'm like, yes, I'm here for this. And parts of it, I'm like, oh my God, go. And it's not, it doesn't like make sense where it's like, I wish they just cut this out. It's like boring parts of the story, but they're essential, if that makes any sense. So, for instance, I was really invested in any like emotional things that were going on. So the dad blowing the horn and saying goodbye to who, what he thinks is his dead son and then breaking down, I really felt for. I was like, oh, I feel that. That was a good performance. I'm here, like, wow. Even at the poor quality that I was watching it, I was like, it was translating to me. And then the mom finding out that the son is actually going to be okay and she breaks down. I got teary, I felt with her. I thought it was really well um, moding performance. <laughs> I mean, it was a performance well done, I guess you could say. And I really was on a level with her and I got emotional. I didn't cry, but I got teary with her. And then I thought Jeff East's performance throughout the film was really well done. I thought he did a great job of selling that character, selling everything that was going on. The only problem was, is the story didn't really have a point. It's based off of a book called Weak Foot, which I'm assuming is mainly about the lion, because there is a lion in this movie that they call Weak Foot, and it's like a mountain lion, and or jaguar, and used to like torment the town, and then was like really chill, and everyone's like always tried to hunt it but could never find it. So it's kind of about that, but then it's also kind of about this guy who like was a suspect for murder, but he was innocent, but no one believed him. So he ran away and everyone thought he just like was never found and died in the swamp, but he's actually out there. And then it's also about the kid, like finding that guy and hunting the thing and losing his dog and like being dead. And just like, there's too many, like, I love a complicated story. I like when there are a lot of things going on but not like this because they didn't pay attention to any of those things. It's like at the beginning, you really think the film's going to be about hunting Weakfoot, finding him, killing him, getting a revenge on the dog that was killed at the beginning. But then no, that comes, that circles back at the end when they really set that up to be the main premise. And the main premise ends up being 
Jeff East's character Lonnie spending a lot of time with the ghost of Cypress Swamp, which is an alive man who's just been living out there for like 16 years. And it's, it's kind of all over the place. And it's really sad because there are parts of it, like I said, that are so strong, just like the relationships and the emotional level were really well done. And you know, the turd sandwich men that I'm going to say don't be, they're the Landers brothers. Oh my word, they're horrible. And then the girl, the love story, there's just like a lot going on and not executed well. I like, that's just how I have to explain it. And it was really frustrating. That's all I got for The Ghost of Cypress Swamp. I have such mixed feelings about this movie because pieces of it were so strong and affected me emotionally, but the rest of it was so just a mixed bag of boring and what's going on and why. So I, I think I'm gonna give it like four ghosts out of 10. Our total movie count is. Parent at home and crack counters are the same. If you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter and you'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put out videos every Monday and Friday. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, and I'm not sure if you are, so you do you. And don't be the Landers brothers about it. They were terrible even if they did learn their lesson. Why are you whispering? I was, I recorded half the video and saw that the sound wasn't recording. Oh so I had to start God. over, it was so sad. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> it's okay. You're beautiful. Thanks, T.